Hello? How are you guys doing? Going to let you guys all come in to the chat here. My name is Ken Rose. I play guitar with a band called Hero Junior. I'm sitting here. I'm on the road right now. We're not playing shows, but I'm just in Chicago. And I've got my portable rig with me. And yeah, we're going to talk guitar, music. This is an Orange Hangs show that we originally did on Instagram. And now we're over here. This seems like a really cool way of doing stuff. Um, for those of you just joining, you can ask me questions about, you can talk about guitar, um, gear a little bit. I'm a songwriter. I'm a producer. I'm really into helping new artists develop and overcome problems with their creativity, songwriting and stuff. So yeah, let's get on with it. I'm playing, um, today I'm using a custom shop Les Paul 1960s reissue that I just got, and I've got Pariah pickups in it. They're kind of, they're custom wound. They're called T-Type, and Sean over at Pariah, I've been trying to find something that matches my 1972 Les Paul, and thank you. And so these Pariah pickups together mm -hmm. with this Les Paul are the shit. I really like them. And I'm playing through a Dual Terror and a PPC-112. This is kind of my little travel rig. I use it in the studio sometimes too. And if the guitar is distorted, let me know. This is the first time I'm using this program. So I just learned how to do this about 10 minutes ago. So if something sounds crappy, let me know. <laughs> Um, yeah, so hopefully that's not distorted. Hopefully you can hear what I'm doing. If you just tuned in, my name is Ken Rose. I'm the guitar player in a rock band called Hero Junior. After this show, you can check us out, www.herojuniormusic.com. We're on Instagram, at Hero Junior. We're on Facebook, at Hero Junior Music. If it sounds crappy, let me know. Um, so anyway, does it say, hey, is it all right with the sound? Steve Rose, you can tell, show. <laughs> um, elbow. Hey, just let me know if the guitar's sounding clear or not, because it's the internet and it sucks when I'm sitting here playing and it sounds like a muff ball coming out. <laughs> All right, thanks, Charlie. Cool, clear. Oh, this is a great format. All right, you guys, I'm Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Jr. We can talk about anything you want. Later on, I'm going to have my friend Blake from the Tone Mob come on. He's been a dude that's been on our Instagram, Orange Hangs. He has been um, talking about fuzz pedals. This guy knows everything about everything guitar pretty much, way more than me. I'm pretty good at playing the guitar, but I don't have a whole lot of clue about technical stuff, which is just fine with me because I know people like Blake that help me out. Um, I am playing 1960 reissue custom shop Gibson Les Paul with Pariah t-type pickups love these pickups i just put them in here and yeah for my style which is like 70s blues rock i think they're badass <laughs> And 
I'm playing through an orange dual tear. I have to look at it to see what it's called because mm -hmm. I always forget. Um, yeah. What do you guys do? And let me know what bands you're in. Put your band links on here and I could shout your bands out. Let me know what kind of gear you guys are using. You got to have a dialogue here. Thanks, you guys, for saying nice and sounds good. That's really cool. Um, yeah, so basically my story is that I have been playing guitar since I'm 12 years old, and I didn't even want to start guitar. I was kind of forced into it by my parents who wanted to give me some cultural experience, for which I'm super thankful. And I've been playing in bands. I grew up in Los Angeles, and then I moved to Europe where I worked as a, a producer and a songwriter. Um, I had a studio. I was signed to lots of different publishing deals. And then I, besides songwriting, I toured for two years with Marianne Faithful and her band. And then everything kind of went crazy in Europe. My whole life changed. And my good friend and somebody that I used to work with a lot in Indiana, Evan Hoy, who was a singer in a band called Hero Junior that I had worked with before, said, why don't you come join our band? So we had worked on a record together. And yeah, I moved to Indianapolis, Indiana from London, England. And now I'm in a band called Hero Junior. It is the best thing that I ever did, even though it was really scary to move from a place that I really loved. And so now I'm traveling around touring up until COVID. My band has played over 850 shows since I've been in the band. We've opened for Alice Cooper. We've opened for Tom Petty. We've toured with John Five. We're a real classic rock band that has rehearsed the shit out of our music. We write all our own songs. And I don't know, I think we're kind of doing it like my guitar heroes used to do it back in the day. And yeah, we're just doing what we love. And we're in the middle of recording a new record that we just started up again after being at home for three months. And yeah. Okay. Microphones. God, you know, I use a lot of different microphones. I'm not a gear. For, I mean, I am a gear freak. I like really good gear. I've used Royer ribbon microphones a lot. I've used two microphones. I've got a decent mic collection. And when I had my studio in London, I had access to one of the best mic collections in Europe. And I still, with, with Orange, I've been using a Sennheiser 905 on our album, just straight into Focusrite preamps. And it's really great. What I love about all Orange amps, whether it's the Dual Terror or my main um, amp in my band is an OR50. And that I love too. And then in the studio when I'm working with other people, my main amp is a Rockerverb 50 Mark III. And all of them are great in different situations. Um, and the, the Sennheiser 905, I think it's a 905. It works really, really good. And I put it a little bit off center of the speaker. And yeah, I mean, and then it's just my playing. Like I said, I'm not really a technical guitar player. So um, I rely, you know, I'm, I'm real feeling oriented and, and my background is blue stuff. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it sounds good and orange stuff's consistent. It sounds good with all mics. Um, you can check out the last single that we did. If you go to www.herojuniormusic.com when we're done here, that was recorded completely live. Our, our band has a studio at home and we do everything i see you blake one sec we do everything totally live and vocals everything so there i'm using a sennheiser 905 one mic right on that cabinet there's two guitars in the band and evan is always on your left speaker i'm always on your right speaker and that's a good place to check stuff out thank you yeah check out thanks check out hero junior we're all over the place we're going to be doing some live shows online. It's not the same, but I really love playing with these guys. So the energy is always going to be there for you, James. Check out at Hero Junior on Instagram or wherever you are. Um, 
Yeah, the dual. Yeah, the dual tear is great, and like with any Les Paul, if you put it on the neck pickup and you turn the tone all the way down. This is a really versatile amp. This is really the one that I travel with when I'm just not doing music work and I want to have an amp with me. I've got this one set up at my girlfriend's place. And this is this is really, I, I love it. I've recorded a lot of stuff with this for other people. Um, it's really good. I'm going to bring on my friend Blake, who has a great podcast called The Tone Mob, which is available everywhere. I met him actually through Orange. He heard my band. We did a podcast together. He's very, very knowledgeable. And let's see how this works. I'm going to say add to stream. Hey. Oh, this is so much better than Instagram. This is working pretty well, right? Oh, I'm liking this. Hey, dude. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. So this is Blake from the Tone Mob. And okay, he, he brings us a pedal to talk about each week. So let's start there. What do you got? Okay, I've got a couple pedals. One okay. is one is a selfish plug and one is a is a not a selfish plug. So yeah, we'll start selfish, with selfish we'll start plug. With the, we'll start with the not selfish plug. Just something that's really cool. Awesome. So this pedal was whoops, there we go. Made by my friend uh, Ed Chu, and he runs a company called Rod Iron Effects. And it was originally a collab between the 60 Cycle Hum podcast and myself. Right on. Um, but now it's a production unit that he makes. And it is, as you can tell, a fuzz. But Ed's not really a fuzz fan. So he made a fuzz pedal for people who don't like fuzz pedals. And it's it's really kind of a... When you hit it with like a single coil or a lower output thing, it's more of like a fuzzy drive to my ears. Yeah. It sounds really good. But what he did include... Like a Rage so Master kind of thing where it just boosts up the harmonics or... No, it's a little, it's grittier than a range master. It's, it's more like, I would say like a, it, like a less gnarly fuzz face. Uh -huh. I, that's not what it is. It's original circuit, but to my yeah. ears, that's kind of what it sounds like. But what he did. So as you can see, there was some inspiration, uh, with this pedal and this whole sword lights up when you plug in the, the LED or when you plug the power in, um, and it kind of glitches and stuff. And oh, so he cool. decided like, let's whoops let's uh make this glitch he figured out how to make it into a tremolo so the the glitch as you turn it up uh increases the speed of the tremolo and the sword flashes in accordance with it so, <laughs> i love the sword that's rare. Yeah, it's really cool he still makes it it's the kyber it looks a little bit different than this now but uh -huh. yeah wrought iron effects is where you get that and it is a super super rad pedal and uh, Ryan from whoops, 60 Cycle did a demo on it, um, which you can find on YouTube. It's, this pedal's been out for a couple of years, but go check out Ed. He makes great stuff. Oh, yeah. That's cool, man. Um, the Selfish Plug is this one. A couple oh, weeks I ago. Saw, I saw you playing with that the other day on, on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. So we this is a collaboration between myself and the company Fuzzrocious. Uh, this is a Typhon V2, and it is a a clean. It is a clean boost. It is a dirty boost. It is a fuzz. It is a distortion. It is an overdrive. It is whoa, dropping it. <laughs> it is whatever you want it to be. It all depends on how you set these these gain stages cascade into each other. Uh huh. So if you like slam this, you know, turn the volume up really high on this stage, it's just slamming this at next transistor and vice versa. And you can kind of consider this like a master volume. So depending on how hard you you hit these things, changes what the pedal does. And it's got a clean blend, and the texture switches change the orientation of the transistors, so they get gainier or more compressed depending on how you have it set. Um, 
and it's a limited edition that we're doing and we've got i think four left as as of now so they're almost gone oh that's but, where can people where can people see that so if you go to tonemob.com slash store you'll see it there okay and there's the bass demo there's a guitar demo and i think it turned out really good that's, i love what ryan does that's, so what do you do stuff. do you do you like do you give him an input on a sound and, a, and like some features that you'd like to hear and then the technical people do the work or how does that work that's a lot of it this one i was actually much more involved in than uh some of the other designs that i've done or helped with so because one night i set up a bunch of boost pedals i had a bunch of clean boosts that i own and i was like wonder what happens when i run like four boost pedals together and to my surprise, it was like, wow, I can get so many different sounds depending on how hard I hit the next pedal in the stage, right? Yeah. Um, and I was like really impressed with what I was getting. And so I went to Ryan with it and he was like, well, let's expand on that idea. And uh, that's what we did. So it turned out really cool. And yeah, that's, people, that's... People, it's kind of a, it's kind of a harder one to figure out for some people, but once they get it, it's like, oh, I see, because it's really versatile. It can do a lot of things. That's that's really cool. Yeah, let me just let everyone know that's just come in. Um, I'm Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Junior, and we're doing Orange Hangs. And my guest is Blake from the Tone Mob. He's Hello. Kind, of, kind of the gear guru around here, and he's showing us some of his stuff. And we're just talking some pedals. I had a, I you know, and I I do some reviews with Steve Rose's new um, website called Guitar Disorder. And I just got a bunch of, that's what I wanted to tell you about. Oh, cool. so I'm, I'm, I've never been a real um, Ibanez dude, the tube screamer dude, just yeah, because it just, it always sounded muffly to me. And it, it never gave me like, I'm, I'm a straight up guy and I like stuff I can add to distortion and add to the amp, like my normal sound is just gonna be whatever's on the amp that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And I got a plumes to review from Earthquaker. Oh yeah. And that's, I guess that's supposed to be like a hyped up Ibanez tube screamer. Mm -hmm. And that's a great pedal. I mean, it's it's really got something. I, I don't even, I, in technical terms, I really don't know what it is that it's got but it's it's really it's way cleaner like good clean clear than a mm -hmm. ibanez but it's got a lot of different it's got a lot of different options and for blues it surprisingly sounds great through a clean amp like you can dial it in so it pretty much sounds like an overdriven amp which a lot of pedals try to do and the the sustains great on those i mean i was really surprised the demos I was hearing on the plumes sounded, you know, I'm I'm with you. I'm I've never really been a big fan of like a stock TS9 or TSO 808, 808. not just not really my thing. Um, I kind of have the same experience as you. It just it, it wasn't defined enough for me. But the demos I was hearing on the plumes, I was like, wow, that sounds a lot more like my kind of thing. So yeah, that's and it's really cool. Yeah, it's and I mean I think for me because I'm really in the '70s rock. Again, that's nothing I'm going to use on stage, and it's nothing I'm going to use with the band. But in the studio, there's a lot of control. But still, I felt like I was playing, you know, my style with it. It's really clean, but it's really, it's really good. So that should. I'm trying to figure. I think I'm going to demo it like a whole song using all the stuff I got from them because. I got some of the weird stuff too, like oh, yeah. the, like the Rainbow Machine, oh, and yeah. uh, and then there's the the other one. There's the one with all the controls on it, and it it's they're filter they're filtery kind of things. They're really cool though. Oh yeah, so I'm yeah. I, it's funny that they came out with the plumes because I remember and I I talked to Jamie on the podcast about this. Like when they did the Palisades, which was their like mega tube screamer. Yeah. It was like, is it just, is that the one you're talking about? No, it's uh. -uh. It's yeah, a, they they did like a a big format pedal with with a bunch of controls and like I don't remember how many different tube screamers built into it. And Jamie was telling me like at the time, he was like, "We're not gonna make 
we don't want to make a tube screamer. They were constantly getting people emailing him, make a tube screamer, make us a tube screamer, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I'm not going to make a tube screamer. And Julie, who's uh, his wife, and like, I don't know if like who's the CEO and who's the whatever, but they run the company together. Um, Julie at some point was like, we got thousands of emails asking for a tube screamer. We have to make a tube screamer. And so they made the Palisades and people really liked it. And I think if I remember correctly, I could be wrong about this. The plumes came, was like one of the modes in the Palisades. So broke it down into a, uh, a smaller format for people. I think, I think that's right. And I, in typical Ken fashion, just plugged it in, having no idea what everything does, but there are three different little toggle switches that I'm going to have to read the instruction manual and see what they do. But it is pretty, it's, I was really surprised that it, it feels for me, it's all about being natural. And I mean, nothing beats my orange stuff when I just turn it on and it's there, <laughs> but it is, it is really cool. And yeah, I really, you go, so tell everybody again, show a picture of your pedal and tell everyone where they can go look at the last three. Sure, months. sure, sure. Yeah. So, this is a collaboration with Fuzz Rush's pedals and me, Tone Mob. And we've got uh, five of them left, or four, I can't remember, four or five. And you can go to tonemob.com slash store to check out demos. And yeah, we're almost out of them. I don't know how much longer they're going to last. We only did 23 of them for that's, the public. So That's so awesome, man. That's really cool. Well, congratulations, and I hope it does good. And this is a great format. This yeah, this is great. Instagram. So this is what it's going to be from now on. So yeah, man. This, all is, right, this works great. Have a good day. Stay safe yeah. in Crazyville. And <laughs> <laughs> all take right. care of yourself, man. See you, man. Later. Hey, I'm back. Um, that was Blake from the Tone Mob. He's got a really cool podcast, and yeah. Maybe we can have one of his pedals to try out. I, I'm also working with my friend Steve Rose doing some gear demos. We just started a couple weeks ago, and we'll keep them coming. And that website's called guitardisorder.com. And same thing on Instagram. My name's Ken Rose. I play guitar in a rock band called Hero Junior. And today I am playing... I'll get that out of there. Um, I'm playing a new custom shop, 1960s reissue, Les Paul. I've been a Gibson guy forever, and my main guitar on tour for the last eight years with my band has been a 1972 Les Paul. It's a standard that started out as a deluxe, and back in 72, what they did was they um, you had an option if you wanted to get T-top humbuckers in it, and so the guy that got it in 1972 obviously had that done and anyway that's been my favorite guitar forever like it feels great and i'm fortunate enough to be working with gibson and i've been looking to have a double or possibly something that takes over as my number one guitar for that because i don't like touring with it so much because i'm always afraid the neck's going to break for the fourth time so and i got this guitar and it's great and <laughs> And I'm playing through a dual tear and a PPC 112 right now. I've um, been playing Orange amps for eight years. The guys at Orange in London, when I lived there, they convinced me that if I switched to Orange, I'd never go back to my vintage Marshalls. And they're right. It's the perfect sound for my band. And it's just, yeah, it's kind of what I always imagined. I'm, I'm a real 70s fan, 60s fan, and grunge fan. And this guitar, Les Paul combination with Orange, all their amps sound great to me. I tour with an OR50 and a PPC212, which is awesome because I get, you know, I can get a great sound in the big room and still only have a little half stack to deal with. I use um, a Rockerverb Mark III 50 watt in the studio for a lot of sessions for other artists when I need to have a little bit more diversity. And yeah, I mean, I, I really got converted to Orange the Organic Way by playing their stuff. It doesn't break on the road. And, you know, I, I really believe in it. So this is what this amp sounds like. Hope it's loud enough here. Thank <laughs> you.
type pickups sean custom wound these for me just to try to get something that was really close to the sound that i've been used to for so long he did an amazing job he does some great work for some great people and what i really like is in an amp that th this is a, a mid-range priced amp even though it sounds amazing it really i can get the definition from my pickups exactly the way the guitar sounds so like when i'm on the when i'm on the neck pickup i really get that 60s ish 70s blues sound that i really like that's combined with a little rock stuff and then yeah sorry man the sound goes on and off it was sounding really good before it really depends on the internet connection i'll try turning it down see what happens um yeah that's a, that's a drag with the internet sometimes i am really sorry because it sounds really good to sam um then when i go to the middle position <laughs> It's got that nasally sound, which, you know, this guitar is really well known for. And then lead pickup. so anyway yeah this i'm a les paul guy orange all the way i totally believe in that shit um okay someone had a question phil had a question about have i played vintage or 120s yep i have and they're awesome um i think the thing with the vintage stuff which i learned because before i got into orange about eight years ago i was using vintage marshalls like late 60s jmps and middle 60s plexis and they sounded really good but they were breaking a lot and i don't know for me personally and you know i'm i'm a feel guy when it comes to guitar so i really need to have that combination of something that feels good with my fingers with the guitar and then how it relays to the amp and there's just something about orange for the rock and blue stuff i don't use a lot of effects most of the time when i'm playing i mean i'll use the occasional wah and phase and stuff like that but i'm just you know i i really like having a sound that when i just play a chord it just sounds like my amps got my back that's just kind of always been my way of doing things so it just fits with me and the 120 it's a killer amp i mean all the vintage orange stuff i've played is killer and it just it needs a bit of maintenance if you're gonna tour with a vintage amp you need to have a guy on your payroll that does your tech stuff and even though we're playing a lot and our band tours and we we do some bigger shows i still can't afford to have a tech and so having my OR50 and my Rockerverb 
Mark III is it's really awesome. They're really super reliable and they they really work well with the band. And if you're just coming on, I'm Ken Rose. I play guitar with the rock band Hero Jr. We play, I don't know, I guess 70s influence meets 90s grunge meets some modern stuff, but it's it's a real live touring band. We record all our albums really live. The newest album we're recording at home in our living room totally live. And if you want to hear the first single off of that and the video, which was also recorded live in the living room while we were doing that song, you can go to www.herojunior.com. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all that shit. And hopefully we'll be out touring soon again. Um, while we're not on tour, I've been writing a lot of different songs and producing with some of my friends, all styles of music from kind of psychedelic folk stuff all the way up to hard rock. And the amp that I use the most when I'm doing sessions for other people is the Rock of Verb Mark III, which is a good amp, and this one as well. So I'll play a little bit for a second. And if you guys got any questions about touring, um, songwriting, production, how to get your careers going, even when it's a little bit hard because none of us are touring. I mean, we, we were touring up to 150 shows a year there for a while, and everything just kind of stopped short. So if you're into music, there's really always a way to be creative and get your stuff out there. So it'd be cool to hear from you guys if you have any questions. And I'll just play a little bit. <laughs> because I am a really big R&B fan is that when you take the gain down let me cut out the volume hope I'm not distorting here on the laptop it's really good for the R&B stuff
Air Orange definitely has one of the best reps for rock amps. But I think for R&B and funk stuff, especially vintage stuff, there's a way to really dial it in where you just get a tiny bit of the distortion. And it's just a little bit dirty maybe than a Fender amp. And it just... it but nothing sounds as good as just cranking the fuck out of it Maybe that's too loud for the computer. <laughs> That's a, I love that Gibson orange combination. It's great. Um, my name is Ken Rose. If you just came in, I play guitar with the rock band Hero Jr. And we're here at Orange Hangs. We moved over here from Instagram. Seems to be a cooler platform. If you guys have any questions, I'll be doing this every Monday, 4 o'clock Eastern. And that's 9 o'clock UK time. And we can talk about songwriting, we can talk about music, we can talk about production. What are you guys doing at home? What are you guys doing in your bands? Do you record? Are you touring? Well, nobody's touring right now. But, like, what's up with you guys? You can leave comments if you want. Um, one, of, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is to play cover songs. And for me... It's really interesting because when I was growing up and learning guitar, all I wanted to do was to be in a cover band. That that's really that was all I wanted to do is play the songs that I liked. And I always wanted to play them my own way. And every time I joined a band because they liked my guitar playing, after two weeks, I wanted to play all the solos and everything my own way. And so it never worked. And a couple people that were in the music business suggested that I start songwriting and it kind of never stopped from there. I, I've i always been writing songs for the bands I was in. I've always been writing songs and producing for other artists. And I think if you guys are in bands and you want to have a shot at doing music as a career, really honing your songwriting is a really good thing. And it, it's, yeah, there's elements about songwriting that can be hard if you've never done it. But I think the main element that holds people back is they think they can't do it or they're afraid. And it's it's really the kind of art that you grow into. And the more you do it, the better you get. And the more you do it and the more you learn about the things that inspired you. Like for me personally, I was really inspired by Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, Neil Young, like a real combination of people that could play guitar and write songs. And, and even at the beginning, I mean, I wasn't really into songwriting. I was just into guitar playing. So, you know, I, I would just love bands that just turned up and played loud guitar. And then I also really loved people like Neil Young, Crosby, Stills and Nash, um, even, you know, people like Paul Simon. And I loved the old blues guys. And the more I listened and the more I learned how to write songs, I just, slowly slowly developed into being able to write songs and continue to play guitar and i'm really happy that it all came together that way for me so i think for the people that 
you know, or just, well, how do you write a song? I mean, it's just a form of expression. So you've got your instrument and you can express yourself with that. It's just hopefully you could sing or you're in a band with a good singer if you want to do songwriting in a band. And if you just want to write for other people, there's a lot of really great songwriters that can't really play an instrument or sing, but they have a good song sense and they have a good concept. So that that's a question that comes up a lot is, you know, how do I keep writing songs and really just keep doing it and keep being inspired by the music that, you know, inspires you to listen to and learn from people. I mean, the, the biggest thing that has benefited my songwriting is that I've really learned from so many cool people that I've worked with and yeah, learning it, learning is, is really important. I mean, there's, there's so many people that do good stuff out there and, you, you learn all of the different things from people by hanging out, by playing, by doing things, and then you put it into your own personal style, and that's how you develop your style, and there's really no right or wrong. So, yeah, that's what I'd say about that part of songwriting. So if you've got any questions about songwriting, production, anything like that, let me know, and we can start going over some of that stuff in this hour when, when you want to. Um, I am Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Jr. This is Orange Hangs. We're going to start doing this on Facebook and YouTube every Monday at 4 o'clock. And I'm playing a new Gibson 1960 Custom Shop, Les Paul, Standard, Reissue. It's my new favorite guitar. I really like this guitar. And today, usually I do this for my studio at home, so I've got different amps and different guitars and effects and stuff. But today I just learned how to use this app to go on YouTube and Facebook 10 minutes before we started. So I've got my guitar and amp, which is usually anyway, what I use the most. And today I'm just using my dual tear. I've got it on the fat channel cranked up on the gain, hardly any volume. So we don't distort here. And <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So yeah, there's a little of that. My name's Ken Rose. I play guitar with Hero Jr. Hopefully we could build a show here where we could talk about some music, songwriting, production, anything that you guys want to talk about. Um, Lexington, Kentucky. Cool. We've done some great shows in Lexington, Kentucky. And you won some tickets to our band. Awesome. Neil, I kind of remember you. Was that the John Five concerts in Lexington? Can't remember, but I do remember that we gave away some tickets in Lexington when we played with John Five. So maybe it's that. Check out the new single if you can get that. www.herojuniormusic.com and check out what we're doing. Obviously, we can't tour a whole bunch right now because of COVID. But we're trying to set something up coming up in October where we've got a venue that's really good theater that we're going to do a show at. And, excuse me, I think we're going to be doing that live broadcast. So I'll keep you posted. Orange will keep you posted when that happens too. And, yeah, check out the band if you can. That's a really good example of, of all the stuff that I kind of talk about. I'm really happy being in a band where I could do my thing with people that are doing their things. And we all, you know, we all get along great. We all don't kill each other on the road. And I think everyone's doing what they want while we record. And it's a really good reflection of, you know, what I like, especially for my guitar playing is a mixture of seventies blues and um, some grunge from the nineties, sixties, rock 70s rock anything that's guitar and song oriented from those eras i really really like and i'm a les paul guy for the most part that's the only guitar that i tour with in my band i've got two les pauls that i take out on the road and i don't need anything else and in the studio i do use a couple other things a couple different amps my main rig on the road is an or50 that i've had for eight years it's been awesome it's like my amp baby and i play with a ppc 212 i use a few vintage effects i've been you know checking out some modern stuff that i really like and when we record with our band everything's totally live so it's really that's what happens in the moment and what you're hearing when you hear the band on record is what we're doing all the time there's no overdubs vocals go down live all the time it's the same way and you can check out some stuff here on Orange. I've done a couple amp um, tutorial kind of things here on the Orange YouTube and on Instagram at Hero Junior. You can catch a lot of live stuff. We've been putting up some stuff from the rehearsal room because we're rehearsing songs for a new album. And there's a variety of different things that you can check out from Hero Junior. And it, like I said, it's, it's really awesome to be in a band that everybody can be themselves. And yes, Richard, if I can answer it, go for it. What do you have a question about? And while you're writing your question, I'll play something. <laughs> Huh. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've had that happen too. I mean, it, that's really funny because we just found a picture the other day. We did it. We heck, actually, it was when I first joined Hero Junior. And um, we had a show outdoor in the parking lot of a really big venue. And it was just all asphalt. And before the guitars actually died, which they were, and it, it wasn't, I actually, that was before I got my orange amp sent over from England, actually. It was like the first week that I had come back to America from London and everything blew up. So when, when, he get, when you've got tubes and you've got heat outside, especially if it was a really hot day, it's just going to give out. And I mean, technically speaking, I would suggest if you don't know what you're doing to go have an expert or whoever your orange rep is in your in your area find out who that is it can be that the tubes fried it can be that something got just so hot inside that you could have blown a fuse i mean you really just got to have someone check it that knows what they're doing but yeah heat it, it's crazy i mean i was watching it just melt down and the longer that we played and there was no covering either so when you've got an amp that's already running hot it's gonna you know heat's not good for it's like when your phone goes off if it's too hot or too cold there just comes a time when your phone just goes off so have it checked out and i think it's pretty easy i, I think it's pretty easy to find who your authorized dealer yeah i know it's solid state it's, it's the same thing though i mean all, all of the chassis of any kind of electrical product it's not meant to take direct heat like that so like i said check check it out online at orange who your who your authorized technician is in your area or what stores offer service but they orange has a really good page somewhere i i used it one time when i was on the road to find a tech in the area that I was in because I didn't have a tech with me. So you can find that. And they're really receptive to asking questions. So if you really got a problem and your amp's still not working, try it. Hope it works out for you. Mike, yeah, dual terror. It's a it's a really for a small amp, it's really good. I love my dual terror. <laughs> about at the end of our hour here thanks for hanging out with me i'm ken rose i play guitar with the rock band hero junior you can check us out here on orange youtube there's some clips you can check us out www.herojuniormusic.com and at hero junior on instagram facebook it is hero junior music on facebook so there's lots of shit with us out there, it's all live stuff. So we're, you know, we're really into playing live and recording live. So check it out and come back next week on Instagram or not Instagram. We're not on Instagram anymore. So I'm not on Instagram anymore. We're here every Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. UK on YouTube 
and Facebook. So stay safe and yeah, we'll see you next week.